Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Uh, so the puppet comes from the hand. This style of puppetry is based all in here. And the way your mouth moves, the when, you, when you talk, the puppet mouth also moves. This is the puppet's head. For example, this. Your hand goes inside and it moves the mouth like that. And the window to the soul between the puppet and the viewer is the eyes. So what's important is that the focus of the eyes uh, is, you know, is strong. The focus needs to be strong. You can, it has to look at the viewer like so. So we have our, our little makeshift puppets here and we've drawn with the Sharpie on our ping pong balls, little simple little eyes that look into the camera and focus like that. Now, can I see everybody's uh, eyes? Make sure we all, we're all happy with what we have. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> those are all nice. Um, so, let me see. So, Michelle, I was noticing that your, uh, your, <laughs> your puppet eyes, you don't have a strap to, uh, to allow yourself to connect it to your hand. So, let's see what we can do. I wonder if it's possible to hold it like that. Hold your eyes, the, your, your two, Michelle, just, just you, hold your two eyes like that. You can't do it? Okay, well, <laughs> uh, well for now, um, we'll, we'll make it work, we'll make it work. Um, so, in the meantime, before we get to the use of the eyes, now that we have the eyes done and made, uh, most people, when they when a puppet talks, first of all, how many of you, by a show of hands, how many of you have ever played the puppets before? Or, uh, I haven't played puppets, but I've actually seen videos with puppets. And if you don't, and if you're making this homemade, you can use paper for the strap if you need. There you go. Yeah, you can use paper. Um, if you have some kind of glue or tape you could just tape the the uh eyes to um piece of paper same concept as this little loop here just at, instead of it being out of elastic it can be paper so michelle if you want to do that while we're talking about uh, the other parts of this you can um okay so not a whole lot of you have done this before which is fine um so one thing that a lot of first time puppet puppeteers do is uh, when they're talking with their puppet, they just, you know, the hands either flap way too big, you know, in a way that's unrealistic to how people talk, or they eat the words and the words aren't coming out of the puppet's mouth, they're going in, which is, those are both uh, not quite um, the correct way to, uh, to show that the puppet is talking. Um, 
the the best way to get that effect is by focusing on what it is you're saying and translating that directly to the puppet's lower jaw, which is really just your thumb. Um, so let's all put our hands up. No, we don't have to use the eyes yet. We can just do the just start with our hands. Um, everybody, have your puppet look more or less at the camera. Uh, okay, great. And then let's just say the alphabet. And everybody, turn. You can turn your mics on too, so that we can say it all together. If if that's okay with you. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right, ready? We're going to start A and go all the way to Z. Okay. A, A B, A, C, A, D, A, D, E, A, F, G, A, H, A, I, J, A, K, A, L, L, M, M, N, N, O, o, o P, 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 Q, U, Q U, R, 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 S, S, S T, 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 U, U v, 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 W, W, w X, 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 Y, Y, Z. 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 Okay, now, so how did that feel? to you guys did it feel natural did it feel like you were trying to kind of force the the sound or the the look of the sound did it feel okay okay so everybody shake your hand out get really loose okay get really comfortable and then we'll do it we'll start <laughs> we'll do the same a similar thing we'll go from one to ten just to keep it a little bit quicker we'll count one to ten okay pop it up again and we'll go. Oh, I checked it one. out. Okay. One. <laughs> two. Three. Like this is the one that four, first put it in. Five. Six. Just new. Uh, seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. Now there's something that we noticed about there's both alphabet and uh, numbers. Uh, with the alphabet, when you come to, for most letters, it's all just one, it's one flap, A, B, C, D, and so on. But then you get to W, W, that's three syllables, W. And the same thing goes for seven, it's two syllables, seven. You have to take into account each syllable every time you open the puppet's mouth. Um, so that, because that way it'll look like you're, the puppet's actually speaking. So uh, now that we've gotten, we've done, we have the basic idea of, of the lift flapping down. Now we'll put the puppet's eyes on and we'll have him uh, do the same thing. But this time looking directly at the camera and we'll try to maintain eye focus. Good job, wow. I see you got, you, got, you got your puppet made. Yeah, you did it. Good, that's paper, paper and tape. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, okay, so everybody have your, your eyes on whoever uh, has them and uh, and we'll get started on uh, we'll do the alphabet again and this time we'll be very conscious of the syllables and where your puppet is looking make sure that the puppet does not break or try try not to break eye contact between the puppet and the camera here okay are you ready and go a b c Okay, before we do this, uh, what helps is uh, if the strap here is under your fingers, like that. And yeah, and uh, if your if your strap may be a little bit too big, I think some of you guys might have your the strap a little bit too big. Uh, try spreading out your fingers a little bit, just to kind of if if it is too big. If it's not, if it's comfortable, then don't worry about it. But if it's a little bit too big, spread your fingers out uh, just to keep it uh, in place. Um, yeah. Okay. So it seems like everybody's comfortable. Great. Okay. If you need to adjust your, your puppet's eyes forward or backward, depending on, you know, where, where it sits, you can do that. If it's too far back, bring it forward. If it's too far forward, bring it back. But the goal is to look directly at the camera. 
Okay. Victoria, I see your your puppet's looking pretty good. Uh, Zane, or your, you, could, you could probably bring your, your puppet, your eyes a little bit forward if you need to. Um, Phoebe, oh, you got Kermit eyes, Phoebe. That's nice. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Everybody's looking pretty, pretty good. Jax, let's see your puppet. Okay. All right. You ready? Here we go. Alphabet again. Here we go. Okay. A. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Michelle, I see your puppet's kind of drifting a little bit. Center. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Jax, you're bring you can bring yours down a little bit. And there you go. Okay. H, I. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, here comes W, X, Y, Z. Zane, Zane make, your th make sure your thumb is underneath the uh, strap. Yeah, what helps for your so you get complete control over the lower jaw here is if your thumb is uh, is isolated. The all of the um, action comes from the thumb um, because that's your lower jaw. That's when you speak. Only down here is is working. Nothing is happening up here. It's all that's happening up here is that your eyes are looking at the camera. Okay. Um, okay. So we have we have that basically down. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, now, <laughs> now uh, there's something about puppets that, um, for example, Jim Henson, the guy who created the Muppets, he he taught the uh, this thing called the people call it the Henson punch, which is the idea that you're you're kind of punching all the syllables, you're hitting the words as you're saying them, so that the emphasis on the words uh, is prominent. Um, I will just use my eyes here, for example. This also helps to maintain focus uh, because sometimes, because you know, your fingers, these up, these fingers up here have a tendency to move naturally. Like it's not, it doesn't feel natural to just isolate my thumb. I'm sure for everybody here, that's probably a difficult thing to do. Um, there are exercises that you can do to help that, to like try to just isolate your thumb and focus on that. Uh, but overall, it feels natural to ever so slightly move these fingers. And that's okay because uh, by, by virtue of the Henson punch, you can still do that while maintaining focus. You never lose your focus if you allow that kind of slight punch to come through. And you see that my, it's, that comes from my wrist. My wrist is, is kind of a little bit loose and I'm allowing myself to uh, hit the words as you as your voice hits the words so whatever inflection your whatever inflection happens in your voice uh it comes through in the physical end uh does that make sense to everybody do you any questions so far okay okay so um let's get back to okay uh everybody i'm gonna go around the room here and uh Whoever would like to um, take some take a few moments to think of a sentence, a phrase, a, a nursery rhyme, something quick or a, or a tongue twister, whatever you want to do, something quick and, and just a little phrase that you can lip sync to with your puppet. And, Excuse and we'll, me? Yeah. So this, the rope is a little bit too big. I'm going to have to put like a little bit on, on, on my, on the back of my hand. Okay. Where to you, stay on? Put yours up in front of the camera here. Let me see you. Let me see your puppet on camera. Okay, and you say it's too big. For, try spreading your fingers a little bit, spreading them wider. Okay, and then, yeah, and then if you want to bring it back a little bit, you can. Um, however much you need to. 
And then that just makes your Henson punch that much more uh, prominent. Um, okay. You could also, what also helps is if maybe you put like a sock or some kind of fabric, uh, let's see here. If you needed to, you could put a sock right here between your, your finger, but between your, your hand and the strap to, to give it a little bit more um, of something to kind of, you know, buffer. Uh, if you have a sock or a tissue or something nearby, try putting that between your, your hands and the, your hand and the strap. Um, okay, so who wants to go first with their phrase or sentence? Who, anybody thought of one already? I'll, I'll go first and I'll give an example. Okay. okay. Uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Yeah. So it's simple like that. You could really say anything. Um, and, you, and you see that as I'm talking, uh, I'm emphasizing the words that I'm saying with a physical, oh, that's perfect, Zane, that's perfect. As long as that it stays on and it works for you, um, then you're, you're good to go. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to maintain eye focus while also uh, demonstrating uh, or, or letting the, the inflection of my words come through. Um, so now does anybody want to try doing that? You could say the same thing that I said. You could do a, a nursery rhyme or uh, Michelle, I think your, your camera's muted or your, your mic is muted rather. <laughs> you don't want to do it. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Chris? Okay, um, like if I say hello, that's a two syllable word. Yeah. So you would have to click twice then, right? Yeah. Hello, yes. Hello. Okay. You know, yeah. starting basic, not, not, not with a full nursery rhyme or work of Shakespeare or anything like that, but just very, yeah, very basic. So a sentence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so any, any two syllable word, you, you just click twice then, right? Yeah, however many syllables the word has, you just you you emphasize each, you know, each syllable. Okay. Each syllable, yeah. And there are and in puppetry, there this is sort of a a, a more uh, advanced uh, idea that you know sometimes your puppet doesn't always have to hit every single syllable because. If you if you hit every single syllable, the puppet is moving very frantically, and it looks nervous, and it looks like it's being it's doing a little too much. But for the purpose of of this very basic um, workshop, we can we can hit each syllable and just be deliberate about the words we're saying. Okay, okay. The longest word I know is anti disestablishmentarianism. So to do that one, the puppet would have to continue. Uh, let me see. Disestablishment. Tarianism. So, I remember, yeah. I remember, so you're, you're eating word, yeah. yeah, you're eating the words. Make sure that the okay. puppet is spitting the words out. Out. Okay. So, so like that. Yeah, exactly. Establishment Tarianism. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anybody else have any questions or uh, want to try? A, a long word or a sentence or something? I want to share a sentence. Go ahead. I like Squishy Yoda because he is cute. This is Squishy Yoda. He is very cute. Okay, so do that again. Look, bring, your, bring your hand up put, with your eyes, with your puppet eyes. And make sure that your puppet is looking directly at me, Zane. Like you see how my puppet is looking directly into the camera like that? Do the yeah. Same. Yeah, great. Okay, now say that sentence again. I like Squishy Yoda because he's so cute. Nice. You hit every syllable. I like Squishy Yoda because he is so cute. Good. Yeah, this is Squishy Yoda. Nice. <laughs> he is very he is very cute. I like him too. Uh, okay. Anybody else want to try? No? Okay. 
Uh, it also, what also helps if you really want to um, hone your puppetry chops, if you want to practice puppetry and really get good at it, what helps is uh, music. If you have a favorite song that you listen to uh, or, or uh, you know, any, music is, is very important. So when you, when you hear a song and you know it really well, you can lip sync to the words of the song. And uh, the more you practice lip syncing to the song, the better you can get at, um, you know, understanding the inflections of the words that come out of your hand. Uh, that also, this is another, um, I guess, relatively advanced concept. But um, when you're, let's everybody take your, your, eyes, your eyes off your hands now. And let's go through the vowels. Uh, who knows all the vowels? What are what are the, what are the vowels? Yeah, Michelle. Yeah. A E I O U. And sometimes Y. Uh, yes, <laughs> very good. So um, each of those vowels has a different like thing that you do with your mouth. Um, a E I O U. Um, now. When, you're, when your hand does that, your hand can't really do a whole lot, so you think. But your fingers have all this different, all these different things that you can do, these flexible mo movements. And when you think about the sound, the, the thing that your mouth does, the, the face you make when you say these vowels, um, you really, you can apply that to your hand. So A, that's pretty simple. E, basically the same thing. I, also the same thing. When you come to O, 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 your fingers can kind of, you know, you have that flexibility with your fingers to make the same uh, motion or a similar motion that your mouth does. And then there's U, U. And this, once again, you know, if your fingers are, all, are very limber, your, your wrist is nice and loose and everything is loose and comfortable, uh, you can really get a lot out of the vowels when you do that. Um, and then it makes for really interesting puppets um, when you can, oh, excuse me, sorry. There uh, we go. When you can, I'll show you another example of a puppet that has, uh, that has that type of articulation in its mouth. It's not uh, just my hand with some eyes on it. See, this puppet can really, you know, get a lot out of, out of its uh, face here, one second. See, it's got all this articulation and flexibility. So it can really milk those vowels. A, E, here we go. I'll, I'll do it sideways actually. A, E, I, O, U, U, A, E, I, O, U. And then, uh, <laughs> And then also, you know, if you if you really want to think about this, all the sounds that your that your mouth can make, and all of the sounds that uh, that just, you know things make, um, you can apply those to your hand to really think about you know clicks and and whistles and stuff like that, you know, uh, and uh, if you have a puppet that can do that, like this guy. You know, puppets can do a lot if you just uh, use your imagination and it all comes from just a simple movement of your hand. <clears throat> so, uh, if we're not too inhibited, let's make some mouth sounds. Uh, everybody, if you're comfortable, if you feel like it, if, you, if you'd like to, if you're game, turn your mics on and we'll go around the room and we'll just make some noises and use your hands to, to try to translate those noises. Um, Michelle, do you want to go first since it looks like you're doing it already? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about you, Zane? Well, let me just have some time to, to get my puppet ready. Hey, 
Hello. Do it again. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> How about you, Jack? Do you want to try? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. 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 Very good. How about you, Chris? Do you want to do something? Do you want to do one? Okay. That's right. Three syllables. Okay. Adios. Oh, so it's three symbols, syllables, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right, goodbye is two, okay. Good, bye, okay. No, no, no $10 million words like I did before. It's gonna be a little, so, so I mean, eating, eating the words is this, but if I'm, it's more like a spitting motion, right? Like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay, hell, blow, okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask, does, does a marionette puppet work on some of the same principles? I know some of there's a little mouth movement, but, but is that, completely different the way that's voiced it's, in it's very different actually yeah uh marionettes all of the action is from above rather than you know, oh. rather than like you know inside of the puppet uh there's string there's string puppets that the puppeteer controls with strings with control and little uh wooden handles and okay. the strings that move the mouth are only a, uh you only use one finger usually to move those from above and the mouth only does one thing, it only opens and closes. You can't really get a whole lot of articulation out of a marionette mouth. Uh, okay. Good question though. Um, yeah. How about you, Phoebe? Do you want to try a noise? Okay. Um, is it okay if I do a word instead? Sure. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Nice. <laughs> and you hit all the syllables. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. Very good. Uh, is that it? Victoria, do you want to try one? Or no? Uh, okay. Okay. I guess that's it. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, let's see. Now, does anybody have any more questions about um, puppeteering? or things that you would like to know about um, anything? Any questions? Any questions? All right, so another thing we can do is, uh, I've, I noticed that some, some of you guys are, when you, when you move the mouth, uh, you, you're, you still, or yeah, okay, so we, we tend to, we want to, to do this. It's a lot. It's very comfortable to, to just do this. Um, or if you're isolating one, if you're just your thumb, you it's hard to isolate one and not isolate the other at the same time. And it, it ends up being relatively stiff. So what helps is if you put your other hand, try try putting your other hand on top of your dominant hand, and and just move the lower jaw of the puppet. Just move your thumb like this. Yeah, and then when you speak or when you do any any kind of puppetry exercises, whether it's a song you're lip syncing to or just talking or whatever it is, uh, just just try this. And and over time, you will develop <laughs> a stiff wrist, but you'll also develop a uh, an ability to just isolate your thumb. <laughs> And do it relatively comfortably over time. It takes a lot of practice, but it uh, it's rewarding when it's when it's all done. Um, what else here? Uh, do, you, do you guys want to see the types of puppets that you could make um, if you if you were to continue, you know, trying puppets? Puppets, okay. Yes, please. Sure thing. So I have. Uh, well, I'll, try, I'll start with this duck here. Now it's a pretty uh, simple puppet, <laughs> um, relatively simple. It's just all that is inside of the puppet is my hand here. Like this part, it's very, it's all the same principle. It's just a, your hand really is just a duck bill. Um, and so you end up with something like this. And now the, what's, you know, what, like I, I made these eyes out of ping pong balls and elastic. And uh, this is all simple household stuff you could find too. Like these eyes are just spoons 
that I painted. And uh, what else? The the skin of the duck is is terry cloth, which is also known as towel. You can just buy a towel, and with your parents' permission, you can cut it up and make a puppet. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's all it's all very simple stuff. The the tongue is your your basic uh, household sponge. Yeah, I just you know, I just dyed it and, and drew on it, and you end up with something like that. Um, and you can buy felt and, and other things that you might need at uh, craft stores. Um, yeah, and and you end up with uh, a nice character, you know. Or uh, how long does it take you to make a puppet towel? How long does it take? Well, uh, it depends on the puppet. This duck here actually isn't. It's not finished, but what I have so far took about a month. Um, if I if I work straight through without stopping or stopping very little, uh, I could probably finish a puppet within two weeks. Excuse me, can I tell you something? Yes, you can. So I know a puppet that one of them control the mouth. Like there's a stick coming off the hand and like you can use that to control the hand. Like for example, like if someone, it's like there's a police puppet and like they're, and then like you're under arrest and then they like grab you and then like put it on and then put it and then hold your arm. It'll be like they're actually doing this and you're like moving it with the rod connected to the arm. You're talking about a puppet that, uh, there are yeah. rods connected. I have one right here. I can show you. This puppet has rods connected to the arms. And uh, this is just called a rod puppet. That's the puppet I'm talking about. Yeah. So you're referring to the idea that not only are you controlling the mouth like this, but you're also controlling the arms and the hands. And that, you know, sometimes you can do it with just one, one your other hand. Or if you have some, if you have someone else available, that you could, you could have them do the other hand for you, while you do this one, or whatever is the dominant one for you. Um, yeah. So you know, you could with rod puppets, you have a whole range of motion. Um, it, a puppet can dance. You can have you know freedom to do all kinds of different moves, and uh, it can point at things. It can wave. And uh, the good thing about rods rod puppets is that uh you know with with the muppets and and puppets that work on video and tv um the puppeteer is usually not seen by the audience the puppeteer is hidden under the frame of the of the camera uh and all that you see is just the puppet here and um i'm not gonna i don't think i could get the lobes because i think you wouldn't be able to hear me if i did uh but you just you know, hide behind this puppet here and if you if you just saw the puppet, and the the rods are supposed to be below, you know they're they're controlled from underneath. Um, it looks like the puppet is is living and breathing on its own, and that's really the whole point of of puppetry is sort of uh, bringing life to something that isn't alive. Because without my hand in it, it's just a doll. It's just a sort of this lifeless thing, and. Um, and then there are other types of puppets that have um, you can control them, their hands, not by rods, but with gloves, uh, like this puppet here. My hands go inside of the puppet's hands, and this type of puppet is called a live hand puppet. And uh, the cool thing about this is that it can actually pick things up and grab things. Hmm. Yeah, they can throw things and, uh, you know. Uh, hello, I'm talking on this little uh, telephone brick here. Hello. Oh, wrong number. <laughs> um, yeah, and glove puppet or live hand puppets are my favorite kinds of puppets because uh, they have they have total freedom of, of movement. They can do all they can do a lot of different uh, different things. And the only thing about live hand puppets that might be a little bit complicated is that uh, they usually require a second puppeteer to do the other hand. You see, because this hand here is uh, kind of dead. Uh, but if you had someone else next to you, uh, they could they could put their hand in there, and then you could have a whole a whole range of motion. And I'll show you what it might look like. My my hand is not in the puppet's head anymore, but just for the sake of uh, showing the hands, the puppet can 
the puppet can maybe think, you know, like that, scratch its head, or it can flap. You know, and it looks really cool when, when it's all put together. Uh, my interest in puppetry uh, came from watching the Muppets and just being fascinated by the different things that they can do. Uh, some puppets have the ability to move their eyebrows or, or move you know, their hands and grab things. And uh, some puppets, they can move their eyes left and right. Um, so the puppets are only limited by your imagination. Whatever you, if you seek to build puppets and, and create characters, um, the goal really is to just make whatever your brain can conjure up. And if you want to make a puppet that can, you know, their, uh, that their eyes can move, in kind of a interesting way, you can do that. Like this puppet here, for example. See her eyes have a little string on the inside that I'm pulling, and they can move like that. And then her eyebrows as well. My fingers are in there moving the eyebrows. And uh, so puppets have a whole lot of you know different uh, possibilities to them. It's all just you know whatever the limitations of your imagination are. Um, or, you know, puppets, their nose, this puppet's nose can move. Uh, yeah, that's that's the uh, basic idea. Any have, more questions? I have a question. What what advice would you have for someone who wants to take up puppeteering as a profession? Puppetry is a, it's not the easiest profession to, to get into. Uh, not because it's, exclusive necessarily but because most of the arts are are difficult to uh maintain as a as a career um some people get lucky and they just you know they get a lot of um a lot of work based on you know if they know people in in the business and, and or if they're just around where the action is it's important to be in the right place at the right time for sure uh but if you know no matter what whether you're um interested in, in, in pursuing it as a as a career or just trying it uh, I, I would suggest just getting as much information on the subject as possible watch as much as you can and, and practice it uh, I spent a lot of my childhood being a really weird kid and listening to music and watching TV and just lip syncing to what I was listening to and watching I would sit in front of the TV with my puppets and just watch the Muppets and do the same thing that they were doing until I started to pick up on what they were doing and why they were doing it. It's another thing about puppetry is that, you know, everything that is done with a puppet on camera, it might look easy or natural, which is the job of the puppeteer to make it look natural. But underneath there's people running around and doing all kinds of, you know, body contortions and facial contortions just to get this performance out. Um, some characters, I'll show you an example. Uh, some characters have really uh, crazy voices. Yeah, I had locked the door already. Oh, <laughs> yeah, everything's locked down there. I just didn't do that one. And uh... this guy here, hi, how you doing? I have a, I have a funny voice, so I've been told. Um, but if you look at his face while he's talking as me, his face is doing some crazy stuff. It looks, it looks all weird and childlike and just not natural. So puppeteers tend to do things that are probably relatively embarrassing if they were to do them in public. That's why they hide their faces and all you see is me. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, where, where was I going with that? Uh, just, you know, being, becoming aware of what it takes is important. I think um, knowing all that you, that you need to know uh, is, is important. Um, I spent a lot of time studying and reading up on it and, and watching all the interviews that I could find and behind the scenes footage and seeing these these puppeteers um, do these outlandish and probably under normal circumstances embarrassing things but all with the um, underlying tone of just pure fun it's it's expression puppetry is a form of expression um, you can be anything you want to be uh, with just by you know putting your putting an aspect of yourself into a character um and that's the best part of it i think is that you can you know being able to do whatever you want essentially 
is uh, the most freedom you can, yeah, the most freedom that I can conceive of. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Long-winded answer to your question. Did I answer your question? <laughs> you sure did. Yes, you did. But yeah. Oh, I have a question. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, it's a lot of hand motion. Do you like warm yourself up with the hands? Do you do like warm up exercises so that you can be able to do the puppetry? And how long? And do you find yourself talking to yourself in a restaurant with your hands a lot? <laughs> um, no, I don't find myself doing that. I, I will find myself on the train listening to music and like in my pockets I'll have my my I'll be lip syncing to the song but only in my pockets I wouldn't do it just like sitting on the train just like doing that that's a bit absurd but um it does help it really helps to to hone the uh the craft but to answer your question about exercises uh yeah there are things you can do I don't always uh warm up but um I think just doing it or the most I do is just you know shake out my hand and you know, make sure that it's all, you know, limber and loose. But um, there are things you can do with your fingers. For example, there's this thing, which is an isolation exercise, which I haven't perfected myself. But if you do one finger at a time, I, I can't even do it as well as I'd like to. But the idea is to just like, you know, lift each finger individually and bring them down individually. As one goes up, the next one goes down and so on. And that uh, if you can really, if you can isolate each finger, I can do that. Nice. Oh. Well, see that you're on your way then. <laughs> yeah, really, you know, just isolation. Um, I do this a lot. This keeps my fingers loose. I mm -hmm. you know, try to do it with with every finger. Um, you know, that's I don't know how much that helps, but uh, it's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, just all kinds of stretching and loosening up exercises and shaking yourself out. And, but it's not just your hands though that are important. If you're puppeteering with, you know, the Muppets or anything on video or TV, uh, like I said, the puppeteer is, is below the camera and the puppet is above your head. And uh, over time, your arm tends to get tired. No matter how long you've been doing it, your arm will get tired and you will, you never get used to that. That's something that you will never get used to as a puppeteer. But um, what helps is to literally just practice keeping your arm up and see how long you can do it. Um, I always go back to music. Uh, music helps the duration of a song. However long the song is, try keeping your hand up for that long and performing performing that song uh, in its entirety. Um, that's one exercise that I do a lot of, just keeping my arm up and trying to make sure, make sure that I can, you know, sustain for however long it takes. Uh, yeah. I was gonna, the, the art of being a ventriloquist before we were wearing masks i mean there were acts where a person can do a voice mm -hmm. almost entirely with their mouth closed very little movement have you heard anything about the craft of doing that how I, I don't know what the trick is but they can pretty much do different voices with the mouth almost entirely closed yeah ventriloquism is um it's used in, in the same circles as puppetry or it tends to be used that way but if you really think about it, what you're saying is that you're, um, what the act is, it's not really about the puppets so much as it is about the puppeteer, the, the person's actual face, because they can make a sound that isn't coming, that looks like it's not coming from them. They can throw their voice, they can make it sound like it's coming from far away or whatever. And that really is the talent. It's not so much the puppetry. Uh, so as a result, I think a ventriloquist does not, always need a puppet and I, i'm not a ventriloquist by any stretch of the imagination i can't i could never i mean I'm sure i could with practice but i i so far have not perfected that art of of throwing my voice that way and and uh uh marion um, uh ventriloquist puppets which are called dummies are different and built differently than an actual hand puppet yeah well tra traditionally they are i mean you could do a, a ventriloquist act with right. any kind of puppet um, or anything really. I mean, have you heard of Senor Winces? He was a ventriloquist who um, he would draw on his hand and the eyes are up here and he'd have a, a little wig on and, and clothes and look like a little boy. And it was just his, his hand moving like that. That's not a wooden dummy, it's just his hand. Or he had like uh, another character that was um, a man, like a, a man's head in a box. And it was like a sort of a trigger 
it worked on like a trigger system where if you pulled the string and the mouth would move and see there's different types of puppetry um within ventriloquism or within puppetry in general um senior wences could uh he could have his little hand boy sing while smoking a cigarette or while drinking some water or while uh doing all of the above and spinning plates <laughs> you know ventriloquism is is really the art of of it's sort of a mental gymnastics, I guess. Yeah. How did you get started in puppetry? I know that you looked at a lot of TV and studied, but what was your big break? What what got you in? Got me into puppetry? Yeah, what opened your door? Professionally, you're, you're talking about like professional? Like okay, yeah, professional. And here you tell. Oh, sure. Yeah, I didn't want to be in the back. Sure. Can't hear you. You can hear me? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, when I was uh, when I was 10, by the time I was 10, I was I knew that I wanted to be a puppeteer and I wanted to work with the Muppets. That my goal in life was to be part of the Muppets and to you know join their ranks. Um, and any chance that I could get to meet someone that works within the Muppets was, you know, I would jump at it. So when I was about 10, I was making my own puppets and I read in the, uh, there's a place in, in Georgia where I was living at the time called the Center of Puppetry Arts. Uh, and they have all these different exhibits and shows that they do and puppeteers from all over, they come and visit and they do all kinds of different things. And um, one puppeteer named uh, Leslie Carrara Rudolph who plays Abby Cadabby on Sesame Street, she was doing a show uh, at the Center of Puppetry Arts and uh, I knew about it from like, you know, months before the actual show took place. And I asked my parents if they'd take me to see it. We were living two hours from the place, from the center. And we weren't sure if we'd ever get to go. And we, we luckily we did. I, I begged them enough to allow me to go. And, uh, and I brought one of my puppets with me. And it was, um, I was sitting in the front row of, of her show. And I had my puppet on and like, like she was doing her show and I was in the front row reacting as myself, but also reacting was this puppet sitting next to me. And it was like independent of, of my uh, reactions. And, and she noticed this um, from, from the stage. And she says to this day that she couldn't, she was distracted. Like she couldn't take her eyes off of me throughout the entire show. Um, and uh, she, you know, wanted to get to know me and like, you know, who was this kid? Um, and we talked and she got my parents' contact information. Um, and at the time there was a documentary being done about the guy who performed Elmo. Uh, and they they wanted a way to bring his story uh, to a proper end. Um, they didn't have anything to really bring the story full circle um, until until Leslie met me. And Leslie, uh, she told, told him about me. Um, and so they, they contacted my parents immediately uh and uh so from there i was he they were training me to be you know part of their muppet family and um i've sort of been around them ever since and i just you know practiced and got better and now by the time i was legal legal to work at uh, around 16 i was uh working on sesame street Tao, what was the ending that they came up with? What was the was, end was, that they were looking for? It was that um, Kevin, Kevin Clash, the guy who was performing Elmo, he was, uh, they needed, you know, is, is, are you mentoring anybody? How is, how is, it gonna, how is the next generation of Muppet performers going to continue? Um, and I was, I'm, I guess, now part of that next generation of performers. The name of the documentary is Being Elmo, A Puppeteer's Journey. So if you ever come across it, take a look at it. You'll see young 10-year-old Tao in there <laughs> in, that movie, in the documentary. Being it's Elmo. It's actually on Netflix, I believe. It, it was. It's not anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's the, that's the... Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, 
Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.